Hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> Same shirt even. I don't usually do that. Anyway, doing quick videos. Kind of explained in the last video, but uh, Unity's been awesome. Thank you, Unity. Uh, two big thumbs up to them. They're, they've actually sent me a bunch of stuff I'm going to show you. It's amazing. They're, they're Man, they're turning into a, like a huge supporter of the channel. Uh, I borrowed this. I have to send it back, unfortunately. I love having a Spectrum around. There's so many things you can use them for. But it's time to send it back, unfortunately. And, yeah, so that's a shame. But anyway, uh, I've, I talked about all these adapters, right, in the last video. Kind of explained this. And, um, hey, by the way, two big thumbs up to my patrons and my members of my channel and my big team member. Thanks, man. That's so awesome of you to be a team member. Um, put his name right here all by itself, I think. And, you know, those guys that have hit that super thank you button and uh, sent me a Venmo. That's awesome. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, buy me a cup of coffee. I love that. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, guys, back to this. So I did a video just talking about connectors and adapters and how there's so many different styles and types and how you need so many. And when, it, you know, Spectrum's next to the oscilloscope, uh, with the price that they've come down to these days, you know, where you can get something as low cost as this, I mean, right around $3,000. It sounds expensive, right? But you can spend that much on an oscilloscope easy. And Spectrum's, if you try to get something like this in a name brand, I think you're going to be spending 15, 20 grand, okay? And then the uh, the uh, adapters, anything you buy with that name brand, all the add-ons, accessories, and that, they're way more expensive. They cost as much as this uh, Spectrum. So, all right. Uh, as, you know, just to throw out some lingo, I, I keep on wanting to call this a Spec-An. Uh, some people refer to them as Spec-Ans, uh, just for short, Spectrum Analyzer. Just give you some t technical... Uh, let me know what you guys call them, okay? But that's what I've heard people call them. And, you know, I've, I've worked with these things. I, being a power supply guy, I do a lot of EMI testing. I love having one of these on the bench. When I work at a place that doesn't have one, I'm like, oh, bummer. It, I'm missing a big piece. Because even though you may use it occasionally, it is so valuable. And those name brands, fine. The the companies that are doing the actual, you know, EMI compliance testing, fine. Spend the 20s, hundreds of thousands of dollars for those things. But for people that want to do pre-compliance, man, these things are amazing. They can save you more money than they're then you pay for them because those labs cost, I think they're around $2,000 minimum per day when you rent a lab, when you go for the compliance testing. That pays for the technician's time and all that, uh, the engineer's time, whoever he is who's doing the testing and doing the data. So, but yeah, it's like two, three grand a day. So, you know, something like this, pre-compliance, that's like one day of pre-compliance testing. Anyway, what this video is about, is saving yourself a lot of grief and time. I have done it with different instruments, right? Uh, where you're testing something, you find out that your probe is bad, or it's, you know, the probe is bad, or it's got a loose connection, right? It's just starting to go bad, or it's just actually flat out dead, which is the best, because then it makes it more obvious. But sometimes they're starting to go bad. So uh, here's a tip, guys. Take your cable, like, see, one thing I was doing is I was one of these, like, cheaper BNC cables with the alligator clips because I wanted to show you. I'm going to do another video, okay? I'm going to do a couple more videos before I have to send this back. Probably going to do them all today. So I'll change his shirt for the next one, maybe. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, all right, so here's the thing is I was going through the, my different cables and connectors, okay? And you have to, and I've got all these adapters up here and all this stuff, but, and I've got these nice cables, but you know what? If it's been a while since you've used your cables, I think what a good suggestion, you know, you have a tracking generator built into your 
spectrum, spectrum analyzer, I hope. Now, back in the day, uh, you'd have a real expensive spectrum analyzer, Hewlett Packard, something like that, uh, HP, you know, and then underneath it, it would have this, I mean, a, a tracking generator that size, a big 2U generator that was, that was sold or partnered with that spectrum analyzer. And those, those things are both expensive. And today you can get the tracking generators built into your spectrum analyzers. So this one has tracking generators. So right now I have a little curve across here and what you can do, and, and it's really easy to save that curve and then reference that to all your other curves. So you can save it and then um, put on other cables and connectors and see, it's because I have these alligator clips uh, I'm seeing these glitches, but when you're using your proper cables, uh, you know, with the proper RF connectors on both ends, not these alligator things, but when you're using proper RF connectors and, and you go to, say, your, from your tracking generator out to your input, you should see, hopefully, a straight line. And then you can move around things. You can kind of play with them a little bit just to make sure and kind of screw them out, screw them in a little bit just to make sure that that signal is solid, that there's not something flaky going on, okay? So you just, you don't want to move around too much because, you know, it is a coax with the, with the shield that's tied 360 degrees around your pin, your connector there. And so you don't want to break it loose, but you do want to just move it a little bit and just, I think you know what I mean, right? And so do that and then put an adapter on and an adapter and an adapter and an adapter and check all your adapters. You, you might have a, a whole crazy ridiculous chain of them that long, but, and you know, sure, you might have a slight attenuation in your signal or something, but you shouldn't have anything crazy happening. And so you want to do that just to make sure all your adapters are good. Then put them back in your in your protected case, you know, where they're not being jiggled around too much and slammed against each other. And hopefully you got your little caps. I have, you know, you have, I have these clear ones, the black ones, the little yellow ones, and you put caps back on them. I don't have them for every end, but all the little SMA ends, I, I generally have for most of them, I think. Uh, but it's nice to, on the threaded ones, anyone with threads, to put a cap over them to protect those threads, okay? Because, yeah, it's just, it, RF stuff is just, especially with the gigahertz that you're going to, all that stuff is really important, okay? So just gain your your leads, play with them, put them all, just check them, make sure everything mates really well, check all your cables, and I'll tell you what, guys, spending a, maybe a half an hour sitting down just playing around doing that, uh, it'll save you time in the long run, and you know, that time it's going to save you is frustration time, because when you're testing something and weird things are happening, you think it's the thing you're testing, and then you realize that you have some flaky connector that's getting ready to break like I had on this one. Um, it, looked, it seemed fine for a long time, and then it started to get more flaky, and I was wondering, which one, like, what's going on? And then I ended up finding that, and I just broke it so that <laughs> I wouldn't have that trouble with that again. I'll fix it and all that stuff, but for now, it's out of my system. So, quick video, just a, a little tip. I've got this thing set up with this. I'm going to show you how this is going to work and why I did this. But, yeah, just a quick tip on RF stuff, super, super sensitive. I mean, we're talking, you know, this thing's capable of going down to, what, minus 161 dB. So, that's a really small signal. I mean, when you're looking at those teeny little signals like that, any imperfection in your cables or your connectors can cause a problem. So, yeah, it's better just not to be scratching your head wondering why your test, your test, you know, device under test or your unit under test or your equipment under test, whichever acronym you like to use, that that's not a problem. You know, that it's your crazy test setup. So always check your test setup before you start testing. That's the final tip. I guess I could have just said that in two words and 
That's what some of you guys are saying. And anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Just a quick video. Just trying to do some quick ones before I send this back. Okay, things that have been on my mind. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.